Marketer's Guide to Student Manager. We're doing this in the morning, not in the afternoon. We may not have had enough caffeine <laughs> talk. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's always always a bit of a challenge on that. So, Well, um, are you ready to get this started? Tell me if you've got the audio going. So. Yeah, we do. We're good. All right. Well, we're, we're off to a start here. Again, uh, Lori and I are used to having a leisurely afternoon session. This is early, so uh, you'll have to bear with us, kind of like the football team starting off. One of the things I wanted to kind of start with is, uh, again, looking at what are the things that you do with marketing that yield the maximum results. And I'm going to toggle back and forth here because one of the dilemmas is that um, I always go back to the Pareto rule, the Pareto principle, and basically it's the old 80-20 rule, 20% 20 of what you do generates 80% of your results. Now, now the challenge for us, of course, is identifying what is the 20% that makes a difference. But again, what I kind of want you to think about as we get into marketing with Student Manager and AceWeb and with your AceWeb software, is trying to identify those kinds of activities, the kinds of data points that you need to focus on that will help you generate the 80%, generate most of your, most of your, your benefit. And again, the, the kinds of things that we're going to cover are what is it you need to be tracking on your students that makes a difference, <clears throat> how can you use your other tools like AceWeb, and then again, how do you report? What are the kind of reports you need to be paying attention to uh, that you'll use to get to that uh, 2080 kind of uh, performance? And again, one of the things that we're going to talk about is knowing your customer. And again, I, I always shudder about offering marketing pablums or marketing broad uh, Abs or general specific guidelines because everybody has a bit of a different market. And the big issue for you is, again, knowing who you are as a, as a school, what are the products, the classes, the benefits you offer, and then who are the people that enjoy that, like that, need what you have, finding them and keeping in touch with them. So again, that's basically the you know, the product that you've got and then the customer that you're delivering it to, if you can keep track of those kind of items, then you're going to be a long ways toward improving the marketing of what you're, what you're after. So um, taking a look at the data they're going to be using, again, we're talking about the person record, the name record in Student Manager. Number one, understand who it is you are serving. And toward that end, um, you need to make sure you're tracking information that helps you, again, either identify who it is that you've got already serving and what their interests are or what their, who they are and how you might serve them in the future based on what you know about their occupation, <clears throat> what they might have told you about their interests, and again, uh, going back to the program, what are the kind of programs you offer? So again, if you're a career program, if you're a professional program, then you're going to be paying more attention to things like their job, what is their position, the company they work for, uh, the types of interest they might t uh, tell you, they're, the, t the program areas they tell you they're interested in. For personal interest, adult uh, education, the general community ed side, you might be looking more at age, gender, and again, what you can capture from them as far as what they tell you, I'm interested in cooking, in home decorating, in fitness, uh, leisure time activities. What are those kinds of things that you can capture to help you develop a profile about that student that, again, the classic marketing goal is find out who your students are know who they are, and they'll go find more people like them. And again, Aceware Student Manager can help you do that. So um, knowing thy customer, again, one of the big things, again, within this idea, and this is the idea of marketing tracking, is the source code on the name record. 
Uh, how did they hear about you? Uh, that's something that I'm hoping everybody is doing, and I'm going to actually roll to the name record to make sure we get there. But the idea is that you want to be tracking for every name that comes in the system, how, what was the promotion, what was the marketing effort that brought them into the system. And then the corollary element of that is on the registration record, which is the tracking code, which tells you for a given registration, what was the promotion that brought them in. So again, critical kind of information. Uh, last activity date, <clears throat> we manage that for you. This represents the recency. When was the last time this person either took a class from you or updated uh, their information? Uh, and certainly the others, we talked about occupation code, organizational code, things like birthday, gender, if that's something that will help you out. Um, and then finally, not finally, but certainly is interest codes. Make as many as you want. Um, use, create interest codes that match up to the kinds of programs you do. And I'm going to jump back to manager. One of the things we always want to clarify for people, and I'm going to stay here, is that when you create a course, when you create a course in Student Manager, you always want to put a subject matter code in. And the subject matter code ties to the interest codes. Anytime a student enrolls in that class, they will get the interest code assigned to their name record. So they'll have the ACEWARE code tied to their name record. And then, of course, you can use that as a target to send out announcements, reminder notes about other related courses in that particular topic area. Um, interest codes, add as many as you need. We've talked about that. CRM tracking. And again, I'm going to be moving right along. We're going to be talking about references in the webinar archives because we've kind of talked about this in several different areas. Um, but again, um, so we'll get to the end. We'll certainly have time for questions. And we'll try to maybe spend some time looking at examples if you'd like to see more examples. The CRM element, again, uh, was included in your manager if you purchased it in the last three or four years. If you have an older copy of manager, you may not have that. And what that will track is any email you send out, any mailing list you generate out of mailing labels, you'll have an opportunity to mark a note on the name record to indicate when you had a last contact with that person. Certainly the other thing for contact tracking is that if you're doing personal contacts with people, <clears throat> you can go ahead and put in notes in their contact history, uh, particularly if you're doing contract sales, in-house program sales. We had a webinar with Greg Sertiman earlier in the year about using ACEWARE for contract sales tracking. And you can put in notes in here about sales calls you might have had with that particular individual. The other thing about the individual, and kind of going back to it, is callbacks. And again, if you've got people that you're working on, again, if you've got some high dollar programs, you've got people who have expressed interest and you might want to actually make a personal call to them, you can use the callback feature to remind you to call that student back. That's all part of the customer service uh, CRM, if you would, keeping in touch with that particular student. And again, if you're a marketing person <clears throat> and you are lucky enough to have some staff or extra help around the office, you can actually assign a callback to other staff within your unit there. And again, whether that's a marketing callback or whether that's a customer service callback, the callback feature all ties into, again, customer service, which is obviously a key part of what you're going to be doing with marketing. Quick note about the callback. If you're going to be doing callbacks and you're going to be assigning that to somebody else, you're going to want to make sure you go into contacts history and put in the comments, why does Chuck need to call Chuck? What do I need to do with Chuck? Well, perhaps it's to remind him <clears throat> uh, about some project. Maybe it's to check to see if budgets are available. Again, put in a note for that person if you're going to be delegating a call back to them. 
Okay, <clears throat> Lori, I'm going to take a quick breather. Uh, any buzz, any questions so far? Everybody, everybody hanging with us? As long as you're still on the name screen, let's talk about the difference between the last activity date and the update date. Okay, um, let, let's get to that. There are three dates that you're dealing with with the name record that we manage for you. One is the date it was added. That is your born on date or your created date, which tells you when did that name first get into the database. Okay, updated and last activity. Updated date, and again, if I hover over it, it is the, it is the last date that some staff member or the student through the web updated the personal information about that name. So this is the last date that the personal information was updated. Now, last activity date represents, and I think it'll actually tell you, it's the date of either the most recent update of the name record or the beginning date of the most recent class that a student has taken. So that represents recency. Either the student has taken a class from you and again, so this, this student might have been living at their same address, same phone number, same email for 10 years. But they could be taking a class regularly every fall, every summer, every other year. And so that last activity date will be updated <clears throat> and is probably what you're going to want to use if you're looking at the idea that sending out an email blast or sending out catalogs to everybody who has had a last activity date greater than a particular, however far back you want to go, 18 months, two years is a, is a typical uh, response. Uh, Lori, does that kind of help? That does kind of help. I'm going to wait. No, we're going to count to 10 here and just hold for a moment and see if anybody else has any questions before we move on. On the Because that last can be activity. a tricky concept, that, that difference between updated and last. Well, activity. again, the, you, you think about update. Update relates to the person record. Last activity is, again, it's really most recent, most recent, infer, most recent activity. And again, whether the activity is you've updated their address or they've taken a class. And um, again, um, the last class taken, uh, this, this basically gives you an idea that this is somebody whom you've got current information on. All right? Looks like we're going to go right through it. You did a good job. Good. <laughs> OK. All right, so we've got the CRM element. Of course, reminders. Again, this is part of the customer service, uh, setting up a course to be able to get an email reminder. Uh, you can have customized templates. Again, do hope that everybody is doing email reminders. I'm going to get some audience activity here. Uh, on the attendees, raise your hand if your office is doing the email reminder. That is, sending out an email three days, four days before a class that, uh, to remind a student that their class is coming up. All right, I'm hoping for 80%. Uh, I'm not going to get it. Goodness, guys, come on, come on. Either you're not paying attention or you need to get on the ball to turn that on. And again, um, that is something I'm going to get into that because I'm disappointed in the results. Um, when you're setting up the system, you have to turn it on. So you're going to go to preferences, you're going to go to course, and you have to turn on send email reminders out X days before the begin date. And for those of you familiar with Student Manager, you know black is a local per user preference. And the, the idea of that is, is that you'll want to basically only have selected individuals be responsible for the email reminders. So not every staff member will get the pop-up. <clears throat> um, so when you do that, then the other thing is, as we said, when you're, when you're working with classes, you've got to make sure that the preference under comments is email reminder to students is turned on. All right, so again, make sure, you're, make sure you've got that turned on. That's a, that's a good customer service tool. 
Okay, interacting with the customer. Now we're kind of segue over into Ace Web in terms of what you're doing with Ace Web. Um, driving people to your website, and again, um, use that URL. Uh, one of the one of the things that uh, uh, I struggle with sometimes is going to a customer's website the main college website and trying to find the continuing ed or the workforce or the community ed link. Uh, so again, uh, this is a sidebar, but if there's any way possible for you to work with your campus marketing or your campus uh, czar of um, all public relations information, to be able to get a vanity URL that ties directly to, you know, like CE at uh, Temple or CE at Nebraska uh, that gives you a website that will drive people directly, something short that's not a 42 link URL. Again, uh, posting that URL in your catalog, in your confirmation email, uh, recorded messages, um, and again I think Lee College has some nice things that if you're on hold rather than Muzak you get a message that promotes the uh, programs and references your URL for the student. Again, contest, the social media piece, link to your social media sites. So again, now, one of the things that uh, AceWeb allows you to do, and again, we're, we're, we're into the AceWeb site again, is providing multiple ways for students to access your courses. And toward that end, I'm going to suggest that if, if you're the marketer or you're involved in promotion of your program, take a look at your AceWeb, at the AceWeb demo site. <clears throat> it's tryaceweb.com. And that particular site, if I get there, that particular site has a lot of examples here where you can see you can have uh, courses that are upcoming, uh, you can go in and look at the different examples of things you could do using an embedded video course so that you've got a class that you can actually embed video. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, being able to put in images on classes, uh, the, the multi marketing campaigns, the idea that uh, if you want to put a link on your website to encourage people to, to say, send me information about this new program, you can put in a mailing capture, an email capture piece that will actually link that name into your student manager database, add an interest code on it that matches the campaign you're doing, and then you can follow up with that particular person. And again, we're talking about the use of the email mailing list. Uh, interest codes. <clears throat> One of the other options with AceWeb is that when a student logs on to AceWeb, um, and they go to my account, you can reference classes that match up with the interest codes that student might have. So again, I'm going to jump back to jump back to AceWeb again. I think I'm I'm speeding speeding right along here. If we get back to AceWeb, the main um, that if we go in and I'm going to log into my account. Now, I've logged in, and of course my dummy record in the database has lots of interest. So again, it'll show me all kinds of classes that I'm interested in. So again, when you get into interest, um, you'd want to try to present for the student on your website interest codes that relate to the types of programs that you're going to be offering. Um, so again, you're wanting to encourage that student to be able to tell you about what they want to take. And then when you're doing marketing, you're going to make sure that when you send a note to Chuck about classes, you're going to try to emphasize the classes he's interested in and not necessarily send youth camp information to an adult who has no kids or is not interested in that. And again, that's, that's one of the things about uh, targeting your emails, uh, targeting your promotions within within Aceware and Student Manager and Aceweb. All right, the interest codes. Um, other services, again, in the general marketing elements, uh, 
work up your email system or work up your locations in your course descriptions so that you can put in a link to the map. And again, <clears throat> if my example is right here, let's look up locations, Aceware headquarters. So again, you can actually put in a Google link to that map so that you can actually, your student, especially if you've got classes kind of scattered around your community, your student knows where to go to get to that particular class. Again, it all builds to how do you make it easy for students to be able to find your classes and get connected with your classes. Okay, Lori, I'm going to take a break here for a breather. I feel like I'm, I'm going to take a glass of water to wash that down. How are we doing so far? We're doing well. Really, I did not realize how easy it was now to put that map in the location. I was impressed when I went to research that a little bit for this. In terms so of Google Maps? I'll be talking to my customers about. Okay. Yeah, okay. it was really quite easy. It was much, um, much easier than I thought it would be. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to our uh, our attendee list here because I have another question in this. I'm gonna put hands down. Raise your hand if you are responsible for or have, if you like to think, some authority over helping determine the website, uh, what are the tools you use in AceWeb. Raise your hand if you also have some AceWeb, uh, AceWeb responsibility. All right, we've got a, got a few. A lot of times, you know, marketing folks will also have, uh, have some AceWeb connectivity on that. So very good. <clears throat> Uh, and again, if if you uh, are not building that out, and again, by way of where that's at, let's kind of clarify for people. In the location element, find location. What you're going to do is <clears throat> you'll see down here in the location notes is that you can put in the embed the location information in here. <clears throat> that is where you're able then to. Uh, have your student. I don't think. I think this is um, the Cheryl method on that, Lori, rather than the the method that you did. Did you put that in the location info or in the location notes? Uh, I followed the link through Google and put it in the location notes. Right in the location notes, which is the the reference that you've got um, that's shown on the website. So, <clears throat> so that is that is where that comes in. Okay. Include testimonials, and again, you may not be as fortunate to get a celebrity, uh, that would have been a fairly old testimonial, I'm afraid, <clears throat> uh, a testimonial from a, from a celebrity, but again, testimonials are always good on your website. Um, again, course descriptions, don't be afraid to use that generate HTML tool. Uh, with that HTML, bleh, HTML tool, you can put in a video link, you can put in a um, link to an image, which was a photograph, <clears throat> you can also put a hyperlink if you want a hyperlink to another website that would help promote your program. Again, big, bold, small. Uh, again, it is not the, the sexiest editor in the world, but if you are not an HTML person where um, you would be able to go in and just edit this text naked as HTML. Uh, the generate HTML option allows you an easy way to do that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt, Lori being the HTML challenge person, to kind of show you that. So if we go to catalog codes, and I want to look up the credit card manager one, credit, processing credit cards. So here is the raw code, and what I did on this, I actually did it already, <clears throat> I went into HTML and inserted at the top an image. And so we now have a, um, some dollar bills, actually those are Benjamins, $100 bills, um, that will now show up on your display. <clears throat> and again, basically I just used the image element uh, what you do on that is that you've got to have a public-facing, uh, a folder on your 
public website that is public that you'll reference these location these images to. <clears throat> and I don't think I've got the link on that uh, still showing, but that it will allow you to then put a reference link to an image, <clears throat> and of course that image would show up on the web uh, when you uh, when the student goes in and looks at that particular description. All right. Before you link uh, up, up, I was going to ask you before you left there to show that generate HTML again. Okay. Oh, let me get back. The, to show you. the button because we kind of blew through that screen. Yeah, okay. when you when your... you go to a catalog information, you've got the primary description, which is generally text. Again, if you don't want to mess with HTML, you don't have to put anything down here. You don't have to put anything in the secondary. And what it'll do is it'll use the text description. However, uh, if you're I would recommend you go ahead and use Generate HTML. Type in your text description, click on Generate HTML. What it will do is bring the text description into your editor, and then at this point you've got, well, first of all, you have to click Edit Text, and then you've got the ability to go in and uh, if, let's say, if I wanted to say module, I wanted to colorize that uh, word module, I could go in to define color. I want to make that red, and we've added some color. Now I'm no design queen, but the I, I think you get the idea. In you know, ital, bold, change of font. Uh, you can you can put in underlined, and again, superscript, subscript. Again, not horribly complicated or sophisticated, but it allows you to add a little punch to your description. And then when you're done editing, you hit the Done button. Do you want to place the code as a secondary description? Yes. And it'll drop it in. And if you're an HTML whiz, you'll note that the image source is showing the URL. And there's the example, www.aceware university slash images. And so again, for AceWeb, you typically make a folder uh, under Ace for images that you drop uh, these images in that you want to link to in your description. All right. Good, Lori? That's much better. Thank you. All right. You're going in the right direction here. Uh, Follow-up courses in catalog entries. And again, prerequisites, related courses, and follow-up courses. Uh, when you're building a catalog description, and again, you're basically here on the catalog description where it says prerequisites, that's where you can identify courses that are prerequisites if you've got a uh, vocational program or a professional program that builds on prerequisites. Uh, no matter what kind of program you ha you offering, professional or personal interest, you might have related courses. Perhaps you have a ceramics class for personal interest and you also have a tour of a museum that might have a great uh, statutory or a great uh, pottery display. <clears throat> so you can cross-reference those two classes together. And again, it uses the catalog code. So again, you don't have to specify a given course number as long as you reference the catalog code. Whenever you offer that class in the same term, your students would be able to see see what is related to this area. And again, I'm going to go back to the AceWeb example here. Uh, related classes. And this is, I'm trying to think of my alternate interfaces. I'm going to go back to all programs. Membership requirements. Now, again, if you're, I, let me show you what I did here because I think this is a good uh, place for you to, again, do some research. If you go to the aceweb.tryaceweb.com, go to all courses, you'll get a view of all the examples of classes on the Aceweb demo. If you look under the example column, you'll note that it'll show you different types of things that this course illustrates. Flat rate coupon which again is another marketing tool. We didn't even 
uh, I kind of we we didn't cover the use of coupons to be able to pump up your marketing. Um, required classes, related classes. Let's go ahead and click on related classes because I was trying to get to that. So again, you could put a link on those classes or if you have if you're going to the effort to build related classes, you can put a link that would also say if you're interested in ACEWEB, you might be also interested in processing credit cards or in the base and back to that or in the base I managed to get to, here we go, <clears throat> uh, Mastering Student Manager. So again, uh, and of course on the ACEWEB illustrated example, uh, we actually, Cheryl does this, uh, links you to the online help where you can see information in the help guide on how to set up related courses. So if you click the Enable Related Courses link, this takes you to the student manager help guide and it'll give you some tips on how to go about doing that. Now of course the other thing is that you always of course are welcome to call your ACEWORK tech and be able to get some coaching on that as you're moving ahead with that. All right, uh, covered that whole related course area. We good, Lori? I believe so. We're going to get, you got questions so we'll try to get through the yeah, we're, yep. we're going to push Got on some to the stacked up. All right, I, that's what I was trying to, to find out. All right, the ACEWEB tell a friend, and again, uh, linking on courses, trying to get people to uh, viral marketing is obviously the, the, the silver bullet, or not a silver bullet, but it's the pinnacle. If you can get other people excited, if you get your students excited about your classes to tell their friends, um, that's a great way to increase promotion. Uh, social media links. Uh, this is a um, an add-on uh, element you can not an add-on. It's a it's an element you can plug into your web pages to encourage people to tweet, post it on Facebook. I'm taking a class from Aceware University. Come join me. You know if you can. And again, that's Lori mentioned earlier in the slide about contests. You know, suggesting that you know let's see how many. Uh, link posts we can have whenever you take a class, tell your friends, especially of course if it's personal interest. <clears throat> I suppose uh, LinkedIn, we, I don't know if LinkedIn is on there for professional programs, we'd certainly want to reference LinkedIn. That's uh, more for professional program promotion. Reporting. <clears throat> now, we've worked hard at getting people into the system, we've worked hard at getting them data, getting their data in the system. So where do we get reports out of that? Well, number one, to learn about the people in your database, you're going to want to go to statistics. Now again, oh, Chuck, the, we, we have a problem. You're, you're not refreshing. Oh, okay. We're still on, don't forget, related and follow-up courses. So we need to figure Goodness out. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Wow. I've gone, or am I still? I'm still up here. Let's still show there. my screen. You with me on Telefriend now? We're, we're no, we're not with you yet. We're just mm. not refreshing here. Yeah, let's. Okay, we're getting every anybody. Are you? So you're not seeing. You're not seeing um, the update on that. Go to um, AceWeb. Go to live and see if we if we keep up with you. But I don't think we are. Well, and this is part of I, and when you started. I'm at about the AceWeb help guide right now, or I'm at the nope. AceWeb sandbox. Nope. We're AceWeb still University. On. Nope. We're still on that same slide. Let me see. Well, I hate to. I hate to jump around anymore because again that stacks up the um, social yeah. media going once, going twice. No, nope. let's just hang on for a minute and see if it clears itself. I'm not seeing notes about the um, about the uh, session being 
I'm showing my screen. Pause showing my screen. Show my screen. Hang on just a second. I'm going to switch to me, and then we'll switch back to you, and we'll see if that catches it. Okay. Hold on just a minute. All right. Hang on, folks. Now, now you should be seeing. I'm seeing the Ace Web homepage, and I'm with you. Okay. So you want to make me the presenter again, and we'll see if that clears whatever we're doing. Show my screen. Ah, now are that you, did it. Wow, that thanks. Did it. That's good. Thank, thank you, Lori. <laughs> All right, so we're back on we're back on schedule here. So social media, and now, as we've said, moving into reporting. Now, statistical reports. You with me? Yeah. That was yes. Yep, we're with you. Okay. Okay. Yep, that's a yes. We're with um, good. All right. So again, statistical reports. There are two elements on here. One is names, name information, and this is about that knowing thy student. Uh, running statistical reports that'll give you demographics on who it is you've got in the database, <clears throat> what are their characteristics, and again, if you haven't got to it, um, back to that. Uh, there is performance sorting allows you to do your top dog. Who are your best students based on either courses taken or money spent with you? The second one, course data summary, will give you, if you would, kind of performance results. And again, as a marketer, the idea is analyzing the results of all your marketing <clears throat> to look at the courses and see what courses are doing well. You know, what is the course data? And again, we have a webinar on that um, under student manager reporting. Uh, there is a statistical reporting webinar. And so again, we're going to leave that to you for homework. Um, in the deadbeat area, and again, when we say deadbeat, I want to clarify this Chuck's, <clears throat> Chuck's favorite report, reports accounting one line one reg deadbeat. And again, there are a number of reports in this particular area that you can use to run to get information about your programs. Um, I'm trying to think uh, a couple of ones I'm going to highlight again for you as marketers. Uh, one of the things that i would mentioned is tracking your interest codes <clears throat> or tracking your marketing codes. One of the reports in the system is called registrations by creator percentage tracking. If you're responsible for marketing and you've got a staff who are taking registrations, some over the phone or <clears throat> picking them up via the web, is that you can run the percentage tracking report and it'll give you a report of how many people, how many staff have captured a tracking code. <clears throat> and I'm going to, I'm actually going to run that real quick, Lori, because I think that just, so if we wanted to run <clears throat> all of last year's registrations, and we're going to take a look at the registration by creator percent tracking. We'll get our logo up there. So it tells us, for last year, ACE recorded 60 of 60. Man, that's perfect. How about that? Chuck <laughs> only had 20 of 29, so he had 68%. And the 18 people on the web, 100% of them, boy, I've got a high bar to, to go here. But again, in your database, in your situation, this would allow you to tell staff member by staff member uh, how they're doing on tracking, on recording key data. And again, I'll just give you a tip. Um, you can actually use this type of a report, modify it to track, to monitor percentage of completion of any other key data elements that you want as the marketer to make sure you're capturing on your individuals. And again, so this is kind of the, uh, the monitoring effect and the, the theory behind that is if you draw attention among your staff to say, hey, this is important data, I'm going to measure it magically, generally the performance on that will improve. And if not, you can go have a hand-to-head a hand -head talk with Chuck to see about improving his performance on that. All right, uh, code analyzer, first-time enrollee, first-time participant. 
code analyzer is one that is uh, interesting. And again, uh, in the statistical report area, I'd encourage you to take a look at it. Mailing label area, zip code radius, and geomapping. Again, I'm going to ask for a show of hands. Raise your hand if you have ever run either the geomapping or the zip code radius reports. And again, all right, Lou, we've got you in there. Amanda, yeah, not seeing a lot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and and get into that because again, real real easy to do. Um, and again, if you are an older, pardon me, if you're a system that has been around a while, you may not have this report. It is actually available in the help guide, and your tech can get it to you. Um, but generally, under mailing labels is where we drop the report, and it uh, brings in a special, say, if, if I'm wanting to run everybody who's interested in ACEWARE, but it's a one-day course, so I'm really looking at only people who are going to be within 100 miles of my location. So what I'm going to do is put in my zip code. I'm going to put in the radius of how far out I'm willing to go that I think people will come, and it will then go through, there were 50-some names in the total list. We end up with 16 to 18 or so. These are the people that are within 100 miles of zip code 66502. Topeka, Dubois, Topeka, Manhattan, Blaine. Now, we've added to this same report the mapping tool. So if you said, well, OK, I want to know where they live within this particular area, uh, once you start the mapping tool, it asks you, what do you want to map, firm zip code or the name zip code. We're going to say name zip code. It brings up a Bing map. You have to, I always forget, you have to hit go now to start the process. And now it starts to do its work. It'll drop in push pins. And you're able to see now every name that is within 100 miles of your location. And if you actually hover over the push pin, it will show you, and you can navigate up here at the top, it'll show you the names of those people that are tied to that particular push pin. So again, a great way to basically get an overlay geographically of where people are coming from. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I would close that. All right, marketing. Um, and again, uh, there is a webinar on that, gnarly, rad, and off the hook. It's under the student manager operations section. Um, and again, for those of you that may not have been in ACEWEB, uh, basically from the main menu of ACEWARE, under customers, either customers or under support, is the link to webinar archive. And again, once you go there, we're organized by general area. Uh, if you, you, see, you see the title, if you hover over the title, it will give you an idea of the different types of things you can do with that. And again, for the marketers, we have done in the past some general marketing kind of elements related to Aceware. So again, I would, I would bring your attention to some of the new, some of the other webinars that are in the system, marketing through your rearview mirror, bountiful harvest of marketer tips. So again, some some other ones for your reference uh, in the webinar archive. All right, uh, the bread and butter report, marketing tracking, and again, uh, going back to you're tracking the source code of the individual. Uh, you're tracking how they found out about that class. Run the marketing report, tracking codes. And again, there is a generic, there is the detailed one, and there is the general one. So again, run those reports. Um, go in. Summary report will give you just the numbers. Unclicking summary will actually show you the names that are in each area. So for like uh, it. it Generally, I'd recommend looking at the summary first. Then you could drill down into detail with the uh, with the with uh, the um, 
you know, uncheck summary and, and take a look at it if you'd like to get in more depth. All right, uh, but it doesn't have to be a report. One of the other things you can do if you're looking at codes, if you're looking at codes, is to, when you get into the code editor, and this is kind of a, again, quick trick if you would, um, when you're in the code editor, add edit codes, if we say, I want to find, I'm looking at an interest code, name interest code, and I say, well, I'm kind of curious how many people have said they're interested in art? Well, you could run a report, go to reports, demographics, run a list, or go to the interest code, click on name draw, sort by date added, by last name or firm, and you can see how many names actually have that particular art interest, and you can see the date or when that interest was added. So again, a good uh, another way to cross-reference information in your database. The other thing, and again, Lori, I added this late here, but the is is that that we have a variety of tools that allow you to interact with other databases. And again, a couple of different things under the Student Manager Tools section. And again, probably live is the easiest way to do that. Import export. Uh, being able to cast certify names. Uh, we've got a set of tools to help you cast certify names. Um, card scan import. If you're using, Joanne and I were just uh, working with this yesterday, of uh, being able to take, if you've got a card scan tool that'll take business cards and scan data, um, you can uh, generate the output file from card scan use the import tool to bring those names, and I canceled out of that, bring those names into Student Manager. <clears throat> name Import Wizard. The Name Import Wizard used to require that you had to have it in DBase or Fox Pro format. Now you can use an Excel file. And again, if I've got an Excel file, um, I'm going to go ahead and pull out class information here, and what it's going to do is, oh, that's the wrong one, cancel that, bailing out of the import wizard, data import wizard, name import wizard, let's look for transactions, nope, that's not what I want, thought I had some regist Chicago registrants, okay, and we've got an issue I canceled out of. I bounced around on that. I'm, I, I don't have my example uh, ready to go here, uh, but the idea, the name import wizard, you can uh, navigate to a set of tables and uh, or as, as Excel file and import those names into Manager. The other one I want to cover is the email status import, because this is an area that a lot of you are using, well, let me, let me find out. We're going we're to keep you awake here. Raise your hand if you're using MailChimp or Constant Contact or one of the many email newsletter publishing kind of tools. All right, raise your hands if you're out there doing that. All right. Now, one of the things that these email newsletter tools allow you to do is to track clicks within an email newsletter. So if you've got people who have clicked on a particular uh, program on the newsletter, you're announcing a new supervisory management certificate and it says read more, well, your email newsletter will allow you to capture the email addresses of those people who clicked on that particular link. What this allows you to do is go to um, export that email list, and then you can import that list into Aceware and be able to either stamp an interest code to that list uh, or things like people who are unsubscribed. If you've got people who have said, I don't want to get your mass marketing emails, you can mark them as do not email, but still keep them in the system for doing correspondence emails for class registration. Uh, bad emails, emails that bounce, 
Uh, if you get an email that's an undeliverable, you can grab those emails and be able to tag, so replace the at in an email with the code bad. And then you can have staff go back and edit those names, pull out their email, or try to look up a new email for them. So again, that's one of the other tools in the tool chest uh, with, with pollinating data from your e-newsletter. Lori, are we back up to keeping up to date with you now? We are. We're good. I'm watching it. OK. Um, all right. And then finally, and this is again the email launcher. <clears throat> Don't forget about the email, uh, the mass email wizard. And again, if you're doing fancy emails, obviously it's easier to do it perhaps through constant contact or email chimp with their special wizards or their special templates. But again, you can generate static emails. You can actually generate HTML emails out of Aceware. Again, where you can use the particular targeting, you know, where you're going into your to your mailing labels and you've got you've got queries that are all tuned to get exactly who you want in your particular email, you can generate an email that will uh, have HTML code in it and be able to do a a quick blast to that particular group of individuals. Now again, uh, caveat. One of the things that the Aceware email launcher does not do is give you open statistics. So it won't give you open rate on that. However, if you put in that email, obviously, a link to a class in Aceweb that you're trying to promote, your results should be indicated by what you're going to see in the uptick of registrations uh, for your particular classes. All right. Well, goodness gracious. I apologize for the blip in between, but Lori, how are we doing on questions? We're just about used our full hour. We have, we have accumulated a few. Okay. Um, where was the add your name to our mailing list? Add your name to our mailing list. This is a example under the ACE web uh, of elements, and it's called the marketing campaign sign up. And what you can do with this, uh, this is basically a new page on the ACE web pages. What you can do is create a page inside ACE web. And, and the way you do that is actually you, and again, we've got help. If you go to the ACE web sandbox, tryaceweb.com, click on the example of the marketing campaign you'll see a link to the help guide where you can say, here's how you create a marketing campaign record. And basically what it allows you to do is build a catalog record. And that particular catalog record can be coded with a subject code, the name of it, and again, you can put in a description and you can put in a personal email that the student will receive once they sign up for that particular program. And when I say sign up, uh, what I'm talking about is that, let me get back to AceWeb. Here we go. Um, what we're talking about is, let me get back to home. Here we go. What we're talking about is that if you're trying to promote on your website a particular program and you're trying to capture names to say, hey, if you're interested in our new XYZ certificate, which will not start until next September or next January or next month, but you want to get it in front of people's faces, you can put in a link. Uh, on any page, and if you'll uh, look at the Try It Now link uh, at the bottom of my screen, of course, if you look down at the bottom of my, uh, it'll show the URL that is the URL that is available down there. Uh, it'll allow you to place a link. You could send that URL that you see right there. You could send that URL to a partner. You could send it to the Chamber of Commerce and say, look, can you put this link on your page because it's a new program we're talking about coming up next, next January. 
that person when they when they sign up for that now I've already logged in so it's already got my name in there I hit submit it will automatically put that interest code on my um, on my name record so that now I could go back into student manager look up Havlicek and see that he's got an interest code and I could go ahead and send a mailing to him or her whatever all right Ready? and again the, there is a there is help on the help guide that talks about that again multiple ways you can use that okay. um. Can I'm you show the location of the regex creator report again? The which one? The the tracking creator. Oh, the tracking the report. Track yeah. Creator. Yes, yes. I was trying to think of another way to say it. <laughs> yeah, tracking, marketing tracking under reporting statistics. And reporting statistics uh, tracking no, no, no. code. We're looking for the one in the deadbeat area. Oh, 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 okay. That's accounting one line, one reg deadbeat, and the report would be called reg by creator, percentage tracking. So um, there are a couple of reg by creator reports that have been developed. And again, if you don't have those reports, contact your tech. We can send those to you. Again, uh, for folks who have had Aceware for a while, uh, you may not have some of these reports, some of these 2014, 09, 06, in terms of when those might have been created. So, okay. uh, and right. people asking about the uh, geo mapping, and, okay. and I'm going to send them all back to the webinar because some of their questions are very specific, and so okay. I do want to to let them know that there's a lot of helpful information in there. So right on the webinar, the the, the yeah. yeah the 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 rad the rad uh, the rad and gnarly webinar under uh, uh, webinars has has about everything you need on that. There is also I think on the help guide or under under student manager. Let's get to uh, most visited student manager. I believe under the customer student manager resources we've got a link to report templates that'll actually give you some tools um, under the report templates and tools where you can actually download uh, student manager downloads if you don't have mapping if you don't have the zip radius tools uh, you can go in and download those so so again uh, and, or if you're not sure contact your tech you know that's that's what they're there for to help you out so Okay. And we did not put in a slide to mention that we're coming up on a deadline. Lindsay is doing advanced report writing in Nashville. Oh, oh yeah. Let me get and to the website on that. Under, up. Yeah. under events, uh, we've actually got uh, a webinar coming up on advanced report writing. Uh, Nashville Community College in the middle of October. Uh, we've got a few people signed up. We'd love to get some more. So again, um, sign up for that if you're two days of nothing but making reports, uh, learning how to use a report system to generate the reports you need. So, um, Deadline for signing up for that is coming up the end of the week. Coming up so pretty we soon. We'd love to have a few more people sign up for that. So, um, All right. Again, a high, a newsletter. Make sure you sign up for the newsletter. Uh, learn about what it is that we're doing. And again, the place to sign up for that is, once I get to the website, under stay in touch newsletter newsletter archive uh, Lori I kind of cut you off on questions how are we doing you're doing fine we're you're, we're, we're all done so you can go back and all, all find right us. very good well um, uh, folks thank you much and again for East Coast people I, um, I thank you for working through your noon hour uh, on the webinar we we've had some folks ask that we we do it something other than afternoon so we're giving this a try let us know how you like this and uh, Again, we will be doing the next webinar will be another morning one. And we're going to try that two in a row, um, two weeks. And we're going to be reviewing the new membership options in Student Manager 8. So again, if you've got OLLI programs, if you're doing membership tracking, come back in a couple of weeks and we'll tell you all the new improved things and nice options that you've got in Student Manager 8. So 
Lori, again, as always, thank you for um, an excellent uh, slideshow. Again, marking calendars for next year, webinars, training, uh, lots of options to learn how to use your ACEWARE to better serve those students. So thanks for joining us. Guys, gals, have a great day. Bye-bye, everybody.